Navigate and special guest is none other than Megan Jaffe. And you know, I've been really looking forward to having this session with you, Megan, given how you and the team have navigated through this whole set of circumstances. It seems appropriate that this series is called Navigate, given what we've had globally, what you've had from a New Zealand point of view, and clearly lockdown for, for you compared to even what Australia experienced uh, was radically different, given it was a lockdown. With that so hey thanks for, for being here and I know you've got a couple of amazing colleagues your your offsiders who've given you amazing amounts of support through this process so uh, welcome to today to navigate thank you very much thank yeah. you and I'd like to introduce Theo Field Theo is uh, the IT and systems manager for our company we've worked together for seven years and um, I'm, I'm blessed to work with Theo I could not have done the, what we've done in the last eight weeks uh, without you and I thank you very much and Olivia, Olivia Tibbetts, uh, Olivia is marketing manager, we, we, they said as we came out of lockdown you know what, what are our titles and I said still hired, <laughs> still hired <laughs> because there's been so much interruption in business across New Zealand but Olivia's marketing manager and Olivia you've worked with me for going into our fourth year now and it's no one can get through this alone we have done this with a bunch of other really wonderful people. And so um, it, it would have been wrong if I'd come on this by myself because no, no person can navigate um, 95 people safely from what we went when we went very quickly from level two to level four in 36 hours. We lived for four weeks in lockdown for, four, for, for a solid four weeks. And then we came out into level three. So we've now been in eight weeks in this environment that we've that we've been in um, and it's it's been an incredible journey i have to say and and i think megan what's really interesting with this is there's there's a couple of different approaches that that great leaders can uh can have with this uh some had a bit of a holiday some went into well we'll just wait until things settle down and then we'll go back to doing business the way that we've always done it and then there are other leaders and i'm going to put you into this category who went okay uh, we didn't create this, we didn't design this, we didn't uh, initiate this, but we actually now have a choice as to how we respond to this. And therefore, what can we do with this time? Because we've got a different time, time uh, monopoly, if you like, given this set of circumstances right now. I think that's the approach that, that, that you took. Oh, absolutely. So we could see what was unfolding across the world. And the great thing for us as a team is that we've been we've been building a lot of, of automation and a lot of virtual technology into the company. And so we were, we, we'd been working on that for quite some time anyway. And the thing that was stopping us from, uh, from adopting and adapting uh, quite a bit of the technology, so we were sneaking layers in, um, but it was it was resistance to change because we, we um, in March, we were having our busiest month ever in the history of the company. We did what? well over 100 million of sales that was up till the 25th when they locked us up and so congratulations was what it was but it's it's great so we were on this really strong path and then the, all of a sudden within 36 hours we went from uh, from being out and about to being completely locked down in saying that we had 140 homeowners on the market so our market was had never hadn't we hadn't seen it like that for seven or eight years so it was utterly in the peak of, of, of a boom for us and we would we just we, we got knocked out at the knees so uh, we were most fortunate that we had the technology available and we were ex very quickly able to go into lockdown with the layers of things that we needed and with the 36 hours notice we had already practiced being in lockdown, we had our guys at home able to work using a technology platform from their homes. And even though they had been resistant to change, they were very, very open to change as we were going into these circumstances because we had to have all of our energy focused on our sellers where we were rapidly going down and it was just which day we'd be closed off. And in, the, in that 36 hours where we were going to be closing the doors and not allowed, to, not allowed to conduct real estate, we managed to get 17 homes sold that would have been sold over the next three to four weeks. So we had a great plan in place and the team worked effectively around. We're a very auction focused company. We were able to 
if we had enough buyers, we were able to pull them forward, create the competition, get them sold. And, and then we were also able to bring through our virtual way of, we did virtual auctions during level four lockdown, where we had an, enough buyers and enough competition for the seller who wanted to make the sale. We were able to do that for them, not because we wanted a sale, but because they needed to have a sale occur. And we had the technology that we could still continue to do some business in a fragmented way for them. So during that four week lockdown period, we sold seven homes um, and yeah, that's great all of them had had buyers introduced prior to going into lockdown but we were able to wobble our way through so you know uh, Ray White did some virtual awards uh, during the lockdown period and, and we said you have to put in a disabled category because we had both our legs busted <laughs> but we we you know the guys did that work for their clients and for the buyers who had a um, they had a real problem there were a heap of buyers who had sold but they hadn't bought so they actually got put into temporary accommodation in a rush and they were living in places where they did they did not want to be living in them so they were trying to secure their homes for their families so it was, it was very very busy in the time we were in the four-week lockdown so you know there's that wonderful saying that the most productive day that that uh, that you and i typically have is the day before we go on holidays because there's, there's nothing like a deadline so so clearly that actually allowed you to get really focused prior to that the interesting thing is uh you know if, if that can happen is there other other opportunities to to put that compression in the second thing is that, that would be really neat is to, to understand is what was your mindset and what was the strategy or the approach that, that you, you had with the team through that? And I know coming out, you've really built some pillars in the business to, to take the business forward. Uh, and, and by the way, guys, as we're going through this, any of you got to questions or comments, that in, please add that to the chat. I'll be seeing that as we go through and we can tip those into the, into the conversation. Sure. So the, the, we're very clear about where it is that we're heading as people and your, 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 your brand is your people, your people create your brand. And so I'm really privileged. There's 90 of us working inside this wonderful company and our vision, our vision has carried us through and it was never more tested that during this, lo this lockdown period. And so our vision is to navigate you safely home. That is our vision. It's been our vision for some time and we've got very clear values as well. So I set the priorities of what we were going to do up around our values. And I don't even know if I knew that at the time, but if you're a salesperson, we'll navigate you safely home for your ambition. If you're an administrator, a property manager, our buyer or our seller, anybody in our world, it's we will navigate you safely home. And so, um, our values, which are, have actually formed the pillars of how we came into lockdown. And now, so our values were so tested and we've tweaked one from the experience that we've had. But be, before I say what the values are, we are utterly blessed to have had this experience. I personally call it COVID-19 because it's been a time where all of us have been able to stop, take a look, um, and you really work out who your friends are. You really work out what your business is like. You really work out um, the, the importance of community, all the things that really matter. When you get shut down and all you're allowed out for is to go to the supermarket in a controlled manner and to walk out of your property for exercise, that's how limited we were and there's police everywhere. And like they, they, were, they were quite fussy on us, I have to say. Um, Navigate you safely home is what I had first and foremost in my mind as I was talking to these guys and planning. But what we did is we, um, safety first, safety first and foremost, get our technology platform right. And the great thing is we've done a lot of work on that for working virtually. Get our communication pathway uh, utterly right for both outward facing communication to customers and clients and internal to the team. Once we had our communication right, having our routines right, which was our structures, our processes, and, and how, how we were doing our, day, our daily work, both from a business perspective, but as we were moving from um, the, the, you know, being free to going into lockdown, there was not just our work routines, there was getting our family settled in safely, getting their family routines running, being with your family, because you hadn't been with your family for a while, um, and then getting your, getting your business routines and disciplines right in this time we were going to be all, all be together because one of those things that we enjoy as salespeople is freedom we all got chucked into lockdown we lost physical freedom so we had to rejig our structures of how we time blocked how we spent our time with with how we were working so safety first 
getting our tech platform right, getting our communications inwards and outwards facing right, um, getting our, our routine, getting ourselves routinized as quickly as possible and adapting to that. And then the final one was, was about, it was about well-being and making sure that for every single one of us, our well-being was protected as well, because our job as salespeople, as, as business owners, is we're putting the oxygen mask on our customers and clients all the time, but we were all leveled, all put into the same spot. So those were our priorities as we came in. And as we came in on the first day, we immediately put ourselves into a, what I call the town hall meeting. So we bumbled onto this Google Hangout platform. We got someone to come in and talk and just give us a talk. And 95 people launched onto this platform and it just gave us a place to meet. And it was utterly glorious. So daily, Monday to Friday, we have had town hall meetings and all of our friends around Australasia and some people from the States, we've had guests coming in. We've been sharing. Everything has happened through the town hall. We will never lose the town hall. The town hall is running now. We're out and about and so as we've gone in those were the structures all the way through those are the structures that we've run and the really interesting thing is is now that we're out we're not losing those pillars mm -hmm. so those are the pillars so we've simplified every speaker every coach that we have strategy structure system standard support it all fits in around who we are and those layers and around a lot of those layers everyone's been able to have a contribution and a tweak of how we like to work it for us as a company. So that was coming in, that was while we were in there. And then coming out, if we look at our values for our company, first and foremost, the word was for us fiduciary, which is first and foremost, we the utter fiduciary for our client. Well, we've evolved that now to safety because our experience of safety over the last going in and in the last eight weeks has been unbelievable. Safety first is not just physical safety and social distancing and doing what's right as citizens. It's also about our psychological safety. And we, you know, the culture of this company is come in, you're safe, you can grow and be your best self. But our safety was utterly tested when people were in environments that weren't ideal in their homes. And increasingly the safety and the support from us, the way that we worked with each other, it was, it was, it was so critically important and it is now. So this safety is really built. So we've moved from fiduciary, which is outward facing to clients, very much to just safety. So navigate you safely home, safety, it's right up there. And that's just, that's safety and well-being just, just so much. So that's the first one. That's all locked in really beautifully. Second one's leadership. And leadership's being a best self. I have seen 95 people be their best selves. And some of it's from being pulled up by colleagues. And because they've been together in this lovely town hall environment, there's been, uh, we, we run telephone trees of different groups of people contacting each other. We've got online pod groups running. We've got all these things that we'll never stop doing that have been created in this virtual environment. So leadership, and it's really interesting. Leadership is such a lip service, uh, you know, it's, it's abused that word leadership. And you and I have discussed positions versus leadership. I've seen some of the most beautiful leadership that's just evolved off um, what I call the inside the town hall. It's so comfy. It's like being on a couch. Well, I call it the COVID couch. And it's like, get off that COVID couch and get back out here into reality because we've got to get the economic engine back up and running. Leadership, um, safety, uh, uh, collaboration. The collaboration inside our bubble has been unbelievable so you know with busted legs inside we were building our systems and processes as the team worked together you know we made six thousand care calls as a company all of us when we're going into lockdown we had a bunch of sellers that got stuck a bunch of buyers that got stuck we rang people up and it wasn't to say can we sell your home it's hey are you okay so in that environment we, we helped the people who were in a pickle, then we worked our way back to people that were unconditionally sold. And we went back month by month, we went into all of March's buyers and sellers, all of February, all of January, and everyone in the team was involved in doing that. And it was just about care, because there were lots of oldies in there, lots of lonely people, lots of people were in trouble. Tell you what, that time, every single day, well invested, you can't get that back. So we've been, we've been utterly privileged to have that time where we were able to do those things. And so if you're stuck in level three, those are things that you could and should be doing because you'll never get it back. And we were doing it every day and we're doing it by choice because we wanted to. So I come back to our values, um, safety, leadership, collaboration, 
and then service excellence. Now, I'd love to put integrity, which is do what you say you'll do. And until every single one of us is doing that every single time, we don't have that. We have integrity, beautiful integrity, but service excellence underpins the journey that we're on as a, as a company. And so in there, we've built our service because we've been working in these pod teams to, to work on the pieces of the business that we've actually had time to work together collaboratively online. Then the fifth value we have as a company, which thank God, is because we're constantly innovating and there's so much change going on here, it's adaptation. And so our resilience has been most tested by being in this environment, as has every human being on the planet. So our ability to adapt and change, it made it really, it's, it's, it's lovely, the adaptation, uh, the adaptability of our guys. So now they're coming out the other side and they've been coming in saying, please could I have a bit of paper? It's like, no, you don't need paper anymore. That's just a habit. So there's been a lot of adaptation that's occurred through this process, which we've come out the other side. And we're fundamentally just the same people with much better habits, better disciplines. We were an efficient business before doing things right. Now we're an effective business doing the right things. Yeah, excellent. Very, very good. You know, Megan, it's really interesting. I, uh, I, I shared with some clients yesterday that for me, COVID stands for commitment. And COVID for me, first of all, it challenged your commitment. It challenged your commitment to doing the right things and, and being the best you can possibly be. Secondly, opportunity. So where's the opportunity in this? And do you see it more uh, as a crisis or more as an opportunity to take advantage of? Then a re-establishment of the vision and making sure that we're honoring the vision that we've got and holding on to that vision because it's so easy in this mode to lose it and be taken away from that vision. Uh, innovation, so how can we do it better? What are the things that we know we need to put in place? We've probably known for a while, but we now have got uh, almost a mandate to put these things into, into play. And the final thing is drive. And what's interesting is, as I, I go through those five, you guys are demonstrating those in a major way. Your level of commitment, seeing it as an opportunity, holding on to the vision and the values for that matter, uh, how do we innovate and keep the innovation going? And what's the level of drive that we need to, to make sure this happens? Now, was everyone on board to this, to, to this level of change? Or did you have some early adopters, some laggards, some sort of um, people who are questioning it? So going into level four, um, we were all running to safety. So everyone ran into safety. And, and, as, and we all had the same uncertainty all of Australia, the whole world had the same uncertainty. And I was talking to Chris Hanley about it. And there's, you, have, you have uncertainty around um, fear of getting disease and also fear that relates to money. So they were the two key things as we were talking to people everywhere. And for me, once we got into safety, once we got our people into safety, once you were inside lockdown, you were safe because either you had it and you were in a bubble or you didn't have it. And so you were, you were nice and safe. So that piece there, we, once we got in there, it was, it was really great. So everybody, I tell you, they ran at speed and it was such a relief. After we got in there, we had to work our way through matters related to financial because there's all that uncertainty of what, you know, what's going to happen. None of us know what's going on, but we were able to work our way through that with people and we were able to put structures around that for everybody. So we've got 21 administrators. All of a sudden, the tap gets turned off completely and we have to make sure that, if, that, that those guys are safe because the salespeople had come from the stumping great run and you always have a lag with what it is that's coming through. So yeah. we your way through those things so that's my experience of the two key things everyone has personal fears that are going on but we were able to work with people on their one-to-one -to, -one to, 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 to help them with what some people have got quite major health problems and so we were we had to work privately with people to get them so that they were comfortable and that we could bring them in and integrate them so when they came onto the platform a lot of people were quiet and it was it was pretty neat because it took the borders away of where people used to sit at sales meeting because everyone would sit in their spot and talk yeah. to the four people around them but you'd be in this place and you could see everyone and people would just start to talk and share so people would step up that normally wouldn't get to speak because the the bigger agents or the you know the more forthright agents would dominate and so it created this level playing field where Theo and Olivia ran the town hall hangouts. I stood back, so I actually do shut up. I stood back and these guys led 
the way through with how the whole thing was run and they facilitated drawing people out. So it was about making sure that every person was pulled through and supported and looked after. And, and so, and the great thing about these hangouts is you can see people, you know they're there, and if they're not there, you also know they're not there, so we can go and find them. So that's how that's that's how we did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah fantastic. By the way, Theo, you've got a the broadest smile I've ever seen. You've got some light coming across your face. I don't know if that's a uh, a window that you can pull down or, or something yeah. along those lines. Or well, you've just done that. Watch this. Here we go. Uh, Sun shining. So it's really sun shining in, in Auckland, New Zealand. So, so Megan, what, what do you think would be the, uh, the biggest contribution that, that Theo can make? Uh, Theo, do you want to talk about the, uh, the, the town halls and the structures or what did you notice from a, a, a team point of view? Uh, and then the, what I'd love to do is, is, you know, what are the pillars you're working on sort of coming out of this? That, that some of the other leaders around Australia and New Zealand can, can learn from and fast track and help them navigate? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Michael, basically just following on from what Megan said, it was, the, it was the communication with the entire team was being able to get across all of those, <laughs> it was being able to get across all of those people and, and you really could draw on threads, um, Liv and I obviously have the benefit of, of living together. So we were we were set up on, in our um, in our dining room, and and um, we'd have a, a run sheet basically, and we'd we'd pull people through by, you know, crossing people's names off and pulling them through to to talk and actually to express themselves, which was great because as Megan said, you know, you do in a in a general meeting sense, you know, they're the people that like to talk, they're the people that are comfortable talking, and they're the ones that are going to dominate the conversation. So being able to draw people through and, and making sure that that was, you know, outside of our care calls and things like that, that we were doing to our salespeople, you know, getting in touch with people to check in on them one-to-one, one one, being able to bring them out in front of their peers and actually have them express how they're feeling and, you know, what they were going through was a massive thing. It wasn't just about, you know, I, I did 10 phone calls today or managed to do some virtual appraisals or, you know, any of that stuff. It was, you know, how are you coping? How are you feeling? What's going on? Let's have a chat and all of that sort of, you know, that sort of stuff. And I think it brought us a lot closer together, to be honest, as a, as a business and um, as a team. And, and Theo, just to clarify, they were one-on-one -on -one conversations where you'd notice either someone was quiet or was no. missing, missing in action? No, sorry, no, no. So that was through the town, town halls. So we would, yeah. we would try and bring everyone through in the town halls and, you know, make sure that um, everyone had a voice. But then to the side, we were also making one-on-one -on -one phone calls across the team. And there was a large number of us who were, who were doing that, you know, from um, salespeople, PAs, and basically just calling, checking on people. And, and so it sort of turned into a big, I mean, Megan said the word telephone tree before, but it was, I don't even know if it was a tree. It was like a vine. It was just sort of going all over the place. And, you know, which was really neat because um, you do get, you know, you can get stuck in your in your ways, I guess, of, you know, the people that you like to talk to and the, like Megan said, the people you sit next to at a meeting or, you know, whoever you go and check in on in the, you know, in the normal day-to-day -day world. Um, and we, we really shook that up and got people talking that probably wouldn't have had in-depth conversations before. So that was really neat. Yeah, fantastic. I, I did a, a Facebook Live, it feels like six weeks ago now, and I talked about the, the re-routines and what you're talking about here is the is is what's the re routines that that now uh, Megan Jaffe Real Estate, you know Ray White Ramuera now looks like uh, moving forward. What do you think are some of the re routines that that you're going to continue on and keep and and, and build momentum with? Well, if you think about what we teach everybody, all of our salespeople, all of our admin teams, it's about um, a structured and ideal real estate week, not an ideal week. And so as, as managers, as business owners, we're teaching everybody and, and ourselves to have time in and on the business, um, personal time, so time blocking, being efficient, being effective with our time. And what we do know is we have our time and we have our energy. And we, the whatever the term it is that you used, Michael, um, we, are, we, have, we all have 24 hours in a day, 
and we all have a certain degree of energy and it's how we utilize that energy with the time that we've got. Um, so we, a lot of what we did as we routinized ourselves going into lockdown, it was, it was spectacular because a bunch of people, it was quite hard to catch them with a good ideal real estate week. So we got them over the month, Monday to Friday, we got them. And we had the morning programs and the evening programs concurrent to the town hall meetings that we ran. We also have run a beautiful WhatsApp and it's just, it's now eight weeks long, the WhatsApp. And it started off with, you know, people um, showing photos of what they were doing at home. But now there is this whole history of our company that is, it's, it's utterly spectacular of people who moved from, they started better exercise regimes, um, better journaling, better reading, better uh, cross sharing of, uh, we, we, they, they, on Friday nights, they have quiz nights and there's 20 people on the quiz. There's all this stuff that happens um, now. So a lot of those things, they, they won't be lost. So the structure of a working day, because I think when we first began, I spoke about we have freedom as real estate agents. So you've got to structure the time to best leverage your time or otherwise, you know, you know we all know what it is that happens. We've spent a good solid couple of months working around those routines and now, now they're habits. So we've habitualized a lot of those pieces for not, not just the guys and, um, and, and us as well as a lead admin team. There was a lot of legacy pieces that needed, they needed changing. And so, um, you know, Craig and I, who both have always had rituals around paper, well, all the paper's gone. So we had to go through electronic everything. And those are things where, when Craig first started, he was talking about being a Luddite. And that was just fear of change. And we had to help him change the language because he was actually blocking the rest of the people coming over. So he was doing nothing wrong, but a lot of what was coming out of our mouths, we've had to change our language with what it is that's going on. So we've got, we've got, we've moved a lot of those pieces. We are much more structured working within and on the business. We've had the luxury of time to work on the business collectively as a lead admin team. And so for us as a lead admin team, a big, big change is we've loved resi work. And so we're much more productive when you're away from the rest of the team because I don't know about all your listeners but on, on my on my clerk when I'm finished it's going to say Megan have you got one minute because that's that's all that happens to me all day is have you got one minute so I can time block away working from my home and we've now found a place um, you know from home for us all we've restructured how we work so we time block from my property and then we come in to do the work we need to do in the set times during the week just so that we get all the stuff done that we need to get done because there was a lot of time wasted a lot of frittering of time um and and so we've captured that time because time is precious and energy is precious coming out the biggest piece has been when you come out there's all the fear and, and um the transition out is using the same blocks I described as we came in. There's a lot of fear as you come out. You've got to adapt when you come out. That was harder than going in, way harder than going in. So we've, we've brought people out in small groups at a time so they could adapt. Um, and there's still a few people that haven't come out yet because of health conditions. So we are running both virtual sales meeting and physical sales meeting as well with social distancing. But as, as, we're, as we're coming out, um, I forgot my train of thought. Bugger. <laughs> well, well, no. What you're saying was it was harder coming out in terms of, of making the transition than than going in. And we were talking about the re, re routines. So, so some of the new routines that are being established. What I am loving is I'm a, a massive believer in having a third space. So somewhere where you can do that on the business work. And so often, and I think you know, even though your offices are beautiful. The, if, if Megan's present, it means you're accessible. So you've created a, the ability to, to say, hey, this is some on time. And, uh, and, and one of the gifts of this is, uh, it, even for myself, I've worked more on our business in this time frame because I've had the actual time to devote to it and focus in on it. So, so that's a real, real gift coming out of it. Theo, I'm, I'm interested in, in, in what tech have you either upgraded or put in place or, or built with this? And then, uh, Olivia, I'm coming over to you. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, going into level four lockdown, we had, you know, there was no ability whatsoever to see anyone outside of your actual bubble. So we had, uh, um, you know, we've been working really hard and, and Megan touched on it before, we had been working really hard to digitize and automate a lot of our processes, but um, it's very easy to re back to old ways I guess when you can just hand someone a piece of paper and then scan it um, so we we did work really hard on on doing that um, 
and so that was that was a large part of what we focused on so a lot of you know digital signing um cloud storage all of those sorts of things we brought that through um also i guess the technology for virtual meetings was was massive which is um as you know we've, we've touched on briefly but google hangout um having g suite as part of our um, organization meant that it was baked into what we did already and um, we didn't utilize it at all and so we picked that up the very first day and now you know to a to a person everyone knows how to um, host a Google Hangout and you know there's um, vendor meetings auction reserve sets all of that sort of stuff can be done um, without the need for to, for a face-to-face -face meeting which I think is great because harking back to what you said about working on the business etc I mean just coming into the office for an early meeting at, at 8 30 oh sorry at 7 30 now you can do that from your own home and you can get that you know that extra time in which is just amazing yeah yeah well i think this is the thing this is the new face to face so uh, i had a client say to me michael uh, can we have another face to face meeting on this i said uh and initially i thought do you want me to fly to somewhere and, and come and see you and i was like no 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 can we have a face to face so this is the new face to face in in terms of be it a google hangout or a zoom kind of conversation this is the face to face now which is uh, is quite incredible that that shift has occurred and, you know, me once upon a time, if you and I were going to meet, it would be physically, let's go to the airport, you know, and coordinate with a flight time or something along those lines. Now it's just the ability to jump on end. We're into it. So the barrier has, has been dropped dramatically. I guess the most important thing is, is it would be easy to play the, the revert game as opposed to hold on to that particular uh, framework and learn from it. Um, as a business, are you doing anything to make sure that that's locked and loaded? Which piece do you mean? Well, you know, uh, uh, we could easily get, uh, revert back to saying, oh, no, we'll do that face-to-face. Face -face we'll become a physical meeting again and so on, as opposed to let's keep the tech, tech going. Let's keep using Google Hangouts or Zoom to be able to, to have that efficiency coming through. It's a balance of both. So we are very much using Google Hangout. However, nothing beats being together. And so as we bring people out and they're adapting, we're, we're very respectful of, of, of keeping the space around them before they, they, they are, until they are comfortable. But Google Hangout's a powerful tool. And I like it because it makes people be on time. And so, you know, you could have a meeting with 10 people and one's stuck and one's on the phone, et cetera. Those things are, those are just habits. So those have all gone. This morning I did one with 10 salespeople and they all got themselves on there and it was a 7.30 to 8.15 session. And one of them came on at 8.14 and I just burst out laughing because I said, it's fantastic to see you have a spectacular day. Bye. <laughs> and it was the other nine were laughing their heads off because they were so embarrassed that that colleague came in late and he was saying, but I couldn't unmute. <laughs> and it's it's just quite a good way for us to be respectful because of rules of relationship, et cetera. So that's a very powerful way. And you don't waste time and people don't get stuck in traffic and car parking and all, all of that sort of thing. So absolute strong place for that. 40% of our work would be in around Google Hangouts. 60% still relates to being face to face, and that's because as people we connect. And so, you know, and that's, but it's now more pods of people as opposed to one to ones because I don't need to say one thing five times. I can say that to, to five people once, and we can be together. And because we spent so much time together, and now they know each other, they don't have the oh, I'm not sure about being with that person. People are very comfortable just to come together. And, the, and in this building, we've got space, so we can do that. And that's not just me; it's every single one of us because we're now all doing the pod work. Because and that's why they're on this hangout with me. It's because we have done this, we do this, we can't have a title because you're not IT and systems. You've been at the helm, well, um, you know. But, you've both been flying the ship and they've, st they've stepped up as leaders by choice and so they now are known where they weren't necessarily known they might have had labels on their heads as oh you're the guy that fixes the photocopier it's like <laughs> we so fixed the photocopier we got rid of it <laughs> they could have incredible strength as do you yeah so so olivia from your point of view you know and, and your, your key role in terms of marketing manager there clearly was a shift around marketing. And one of the, the, the conversations I know I had on, on an earlier Navigate was watch out being perceived marketing wise as opportunistic with, uh, with, with the marketplace. How have you shifted the, the marketing message uh, over this time frame, and, and what's your plan sort of coming out as a, as a marketing message? 
I think, I guess what's most relevant um, is the micro data and, it, and it's not so much looking at what, what was happening before, it's like the what's happening right now. So as a team and um, it sinks into our sales meeting on a Tuesday, we've captured, we were doing it before, but we've just obviously increased it and done it in a more effective way to really capture what's going on. And it's, you know, it's up to the minute. Um, and then it's packaging that out and, and getting that out to our clients and, and so that they can, they can really, you know, they can make their informed decisions the best that they can with the most up-to-date um, relevant information that we can, we can provide. Yeah, so I love I love the term microdata. So and and making sure it's it's relevant and it's now, and 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 then shifting that to to providing it to the clients in a way that they can make an informed decision. We're seeing a lot, and, and I, I'd love to get get your view on this, Megan. We're seeing a lot of markets where where stock is is moving to a place of being incredibly tight, um, and where where there might have been just like you were experiencing some some really neat momentum in the marketplace. There's a lot of people saying, "Let me wait and see." And then, of course, we've got a, a couple of uh, economists and banks who are coming in with a view of what's going to happen in the property market. What are you seeing, or how are you countering that with uh, within your team? Can I yeah. can I answer that? This is a cracker. This one. Um, so we've all survived. We're now in the phase of reviving our businesses. And we will thrive, and we're thriving. And it, it's such a, an important thing that you're you're talking about right there because. Um, we have energy, we have time, and we have to create momentum. The market was creating momentum before, and we have to create the momentum with our energy. And it's very hard to do when you guys are coming out of, you know, level three to level two, et cetera. It's very hard to do, but that's what we have to do because you've got sellers who don't want to sell because they're reading that sort of information in the medias. You've got buyers who aren't sure because, you know, I know it's in some places in Australia, you're being told it's going to drop by 30%. Like, well, that's so exciting if that were to happen. So we are the ones that actually create the momentum and energy into the marketplace. And what Olivia is talking about with microdata is it's not what's happening in a week's time, it's what's happening today and yesterday. And so in order to get momentum into the marketplace, you've just got to encourage people to come out and it's to go to paper to get offers. And once we get offers, it, we build competition. Uh, but we, we did 20 property sales last week, 17 of those had multi offers around them, I think six were by auction, but multi offers. And so our guys had been in habits where they wouldn't take an offer, which wasn't going to be a selling offer because they'd been so busy in the rising market. But we have a very simple role with our process of moving a seller towards a sale or a buyer towards paper. And that is to get someone who'd like to own the home, get them to paper, start the process with competition, then we get price alignment, then we get a sale. And so it was getting our guys to go and get the offers from people. And it was very, very hard to do. So it's slow and it's deep and it takes time and you have to have trust. You get the offers, you then are starting to move towards a competitive situation and then towards a sale. Now that sale is a critical piece of microdata because of that sale and all of our sales have been within a price price range. We have experienced two price drops. So we sold 17 while we're in lockdown. We sold, how, it's the 21st, how many we sold? 26? We sold 26 homes. Like we're having a crack a month, all with multi offers because each that, that one home sale, there is the case study of how the buyers felt safe to buy through competition. The seller was comfortable to sell. And off the back of that, here's the story for the next sellers of why they should come out. Because there are so many buyers who want to own and we can safely create this competitive process for you. And then the information that they're reading in the media, we just counteract it with, look, that may be what they're saying out there and look at how wrong those guys got it on how many people in Australia would get COVID-19. Would you trust them anyway? And it's like, here's the reality. So our reality today, our reality to yesterday is that we sold five homes unconditionally yesterday. Our reality today is we have an auction at six o'clock and a multi-offer for a multi-million dollar property at six with four offers on the table. That is our reality, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. So you have to be so connected to what's going on and relay it to the in, in, in the right language with empathy and the and the trust that you've got with your clients. So micro that is microdata, and that's what I think people because they've been running so fast, they've been looking for big clumps. What happened a month ago? It doesn't matter. 
what happened yesterday really matters. What's happening right now matters. So what happens this afternoon, we will make sure the clients that need to know about those sales know about the safety of how we transitioned them through. And I, I believe me, it's adding up to an utterly thump a month for our sellers who have been encouraged and brave enough to come out and to sell, and they're coming out in hordes. There's a massive listing shortage in New Zealand, but not at Ray White Remuera. There's a massive listing shortage in Australia. I can see the little the worms of Ray White with this Australasian shortage of, um, they've got good appraisals, no listings and um, sales that, uh, 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 you know, I'm sure they'll flow through. But if you, you have to have the trust of the sellers to come through now, it's the right time. The other thing, Michael, is as real estate agents, we've created the cycle, the seasonal cycle. We've just proved that if you take everything away, real estate still goes on. So we all go on our holidays in winter here in New Zealand. So the market goes down. Well, no one's going away this year. And believe me, there's a thump a lot that's coming through. So it's some of those fundamental adjustments around the seasonal cycle. We just take a look at those. Um, and I don't I think totally it, agree. Yeah, totally agree. So, so uh, guys, if I can just highlight a couple of points that are coming through, and, and uh, John Cunningham, I, I agree with that comment that uh, the uh, the the time and energy are the things that we can control, and to a great extent, we are waiting for the market momentum to come into play, as opposed to no, no, no we've got to create the momentum. And Megan, one of the things I, I've, I've loved about the way that you run your your sales meeting and team meetings you will do deal deconstructs. And a deal deconstruct, guys, if, if you're not doing this in your sales meetings, you need to, it's such an important, simple step. That hang on a tick, there was no way that deal was coming together a week ago or two weeks ago, and now it came together. How did that happen? And deconstructing that deal and to actually work out, well, what did you say to the buyer? What did you say to the seller? Uh, there's no way they're gonna do that, what happened? And then being able to take that and say, yes, this is what the media is saying, but let me actually explain, here's what's happening in, our marketplace or what we're experiencing. And the other thing that I have shared on some with some of our agents is when a client comes in and says, well, this is going to happen. Look, you could be right or they could be right. However, this is what we're actually experiencing. And as simple as that is, it's super, super strong. The other thing that you, you're demonstrating remarkably, and I'm sure this is everyone in the team as, as you instill it in the team, is uh, I'm known for sharing five E's and I've shared this with your team, you know, many years ago, I remember Megan, and that is energy, empathy, expertise, enthusiasm, and effort. So if you guys uh, who are listening in, if, if you haven't got those integrated into your business model, you need to. And as simple as it is, is the number one thing people buy is our energy. Uh, the number one people are looking for is us to have empathy and be able to step into their shoes, understand. They're looking for our expertise in that micro data, uh, as you're saying, uh, Olivia, to help me understand it. Then the enthusiasm that I'm enthusiastic about helping you buy, helping you sell, uh, or, or for those in the, in the rental side of the business. And then the final thing, am I willing to do the work? Am I willing to put the effort in to actually make it happen? Uh, which is, is just awesome. We are so we are so willing because if you're looking at the clients that we're all dealing with, they have such a need, you know, and we've had the privilege in this time of talking to so many people and they are in need. And you know, the, the phone calls used to be quick at quick before going into lockdown and being in lockdown, people had a lot of time and they were really available. It was interesting that, you know, some people have KPIs of 50 calls a day, et cetera, but on average, you could only do five because a call would take on average 50 minutes if you were trusted and if you were empathetic towards the client. And, you know, we'd, it was, how are you? Are you okay? How can we help you? Calls, genuine care calls. And John, you're on the line. You, you actually taught me three weeks ago, you talked about care calls versus value calls. And it really helped us, um, you know, it tweaked us as a team because we, we were just going in to provide support um, to, to help the people that were in a pickle. But um, as, as we evolved through and, and, and the, client, the, the clients were um, in lockdown, they started to come out because they were a bit bored and they were okay. So that's when we started to be able to provide the value and the service calls and start to talk about the talk about the, well, what will it look like, et cetera, et cetera. I'd really like to help you and show you guys one of the slides with what we do in sales meeting because um, Matt Gibson, one of our salespeople, took our microdata, and I call it microdata because these are facts. There is so much anecdotal nonsense that's going across the industry that our, our, what, what comes out of our mouth has to be quite accurate. Can you, can you put a slide up? You can't. Oh. 
no, no. Oh, I'm uh, not, not on the short notice that it'll, it'll ruin Michael's recording. It'll ruin your recording. So, so no, no, you could do that. You can, you can, uh, uh, I, I'm sure you can find it. But look, is it, is it self-explanatory enough to, that we could share it afterwards, Megan? Yeah all got influenced was re we really took the time so none of us have a large volume so it's it's around well can you read it off can you just grab it off the phone we'll, we'll grab it for you but it relates it's coming. i think it's going to come uh, by the way yeah 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 um, so it, it relates to firstly we're driving offers through with, with what it is we're doing. And it's not about the price. It's about the momentum that comes around the offers. Then it's the multi-offers. Then it's the auctions. Then it's the sales. And we would go and we would case study each sale because in it, it might be a language conversation. It might be just a few words. It might be um, our brokers have been utterly fundamental with helping people who um, had to get re-approved on their pre-approvals. So there was every single piece of learning we could have about how we nurtured someone towards paper or towards a sale, all of those things help drive the momentum. Now, looking at, at the, the web traffic and the buyer inquiry that was happening around our websites um, as we were putting properties on during lockdown, just making that available of, of the activity that started to occur around property um, after a couple of weeks and being in lockdown, that gave sellers um, some encouragement that they might just put their properties back up and then we were able to create, oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at that. Look at See, that. The, Theo, we knew, we could, we knew we could, you could do it. So when you're coming out of level four and you haven't been able to access property, we're just, you know, there's energy around appraisals and listings. Now, new listings for that week were listings launched, not listings signed. 23 written offers. There's the private inspections. And we're only allowed to, we were only allowed to do two a day mm -hmm. in this time. Um, and then we went into open homes. So up until the Thursday, we were only allowed to do private inspections. And then we had a weekend of open <laughs> homes. Fancy that. Um, away we went. In around sales, looking at method of sales, quite interesting for whatever week this is. Um, and, you know, deconstructing, we've taken a lot of our black stock, which is property that's overpriced, and moving it in, uh, uh, working with sellers through facts, showing them facts of um, how, how by multi-office we can get them towards a sale. So we're doing breakdowns. Now, a lot of this is to encourage our salespeople to come back into what they hadn't been doing because we weren't able to do it. So yep. it's a habit. So there you can see we're very focused on auctions with what we're doing. We've got 42 auctions um, over the next three weeks, I think, up till the 30th of June. That's not bad, but we do have a target of 60. So that's just for three weeks. And then there's our website traffic. And all of this gets blocked out and sent out to the um, the people in our, that are our Pipeline A sellers. And so there's a couple of case studies that Liv, you took people through. And it was, look, at the, look at the degree of information in the case study. And some of these case studies get taken out to people who are thinking of selling. So inside the content is what people need um, to help them make that step to go into. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm, loving, I'm loving, by the way, where, where, did the, where was the source of this particular contact? You know, where do we actually start the process? Uh, on that previous one, Olivia. So, it, you know, people can actually get a sense of like, wow, that's actually uh, great. Now, what's interesting is I think everyone is having, is doing uh, bits of this a bit of the time, but I think what you've done with, uh, with, with this particular framework, uh, and, and it's a combination, I think, of, of Olivia having someone such as yourself who can bring that information together and have the team provide the data in, and put it into a format. So, you know, I love, if you slow the word information down, it becomes to in a formation. So you're putting it into a form that can be utilized for clients and for team to actually take it on board and get up to, to not up to speed, it's the wrong word, but, but get a new level of confidence because there's two confidence pieces here, isn't there, Megan? There's team confidence. I've got to be confident to make the calls and do the things and go in and, uh, and gain an offer from a buyer uh, and, and have a conversation with a seller who says, I'm not going to make a move until uh, September or October. Well, that's interesting you say that. Let me just share with you some information that might change that decision. Um, by the way, I totally respect if that's what you want to do, but I think you should be at least aware of this. Uh, so it's team confidence first and then client confidence second. Mm. Yeah, I agree. So 
if you're if you're a business owner on the hangout today it's just going in with your team we had to create momentum because people have been basically stuck for eight weeks that's how we created the momentum just to start the economic engine going again and give our sellers facts because there were no facts there was only all this nonsense that's in the media and i'm sure that some of it will come true because what comes out sales people's mouth mouths if, if you say the market's terrible and it's going down 30 percent well guess what for your seller it may and, and so it's about your belief system. So we strongly believe that this is very good real estate that we're selling. And, you know, if we create competition, we don't, we can guarantee our process, Michael. We cannot guarantee the outcome. But if we create the competition, which is what we're appointed to do, to market, communicate, negotiate, create competition, the outcome, as long as we've left no stone unturned, the seller then gets to decide and the buyer gets to, to decide in a transparent way what they would like to do. So that's really, we're just showing you an example of how we got, I joke about it, our people off the COVID couch. It's not a lifestyle. You're not gonna live down the crack of the COVID couch. Come on out. And so it's how do we get going? This is how we got people going. So we created a bit of fun around it. We're very serious with what it is that we're doing. We're very ambitious with what we're doing, but it's the way that that we worked to all come out because I actually didn't want to come out. It was it was outstanding being in lockdown. It's so beautiful um, being able to live in this bubble and like the shops were completely shut. I spent forty two dollars in eight weeks. Like that is. I haven't done that since I hadn't. Like they, I was, they have never seen yeah. such credit card activity uh, on your on your account ever. No, no, I, I, I just stopped, and then yeah. I. That actually means. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, I bought an online th a thing on stoicism with Ryan Holiday. It was a day. It was beautiful. It was best forty two dollars I've spent actually. It was really good. Um, yeah. So that's those are some pieces. But I think Michael survive, revive, thrive with our people, for ourselves. Um, never lose the magic of what's happened to us all. Um, and, you know, we, we've all, there's been some, you know, change for all of us and the good pieces, we must work to keep the good pieces and not go back to the craziness of before. Um, my, my summary of the entire experience is I am so proud. I am so proud of our people and of how our people have served their people. And, and it's, yeah, it's, it's an utter blessing that we got this major handbrake in the world and that all of us in Australasia, we've come through it. Um, and with respect of any of your family members have been impacted, we've all come through it. And we're most fortunate because I've been plugged into the States and Europe every day. Absolutely. And, it, and a lot of my learning from leadership is watching Andrew Como, actually, an amazing guy. Um, I think we're all blessed with what it is that we've got. Yeah. Um, that we've experienced from it so a lot of lot of blessings yeah of fantastic so so theo your biggest your biggest lesson coming out of this um yeah i don't know about lesson i i guess my just my biggest takeaway has um has been the communication piece i think and how much that um how much that matters to people you know and and i think also um it's very easy to get stuck behind a computer screen or a you know a text message, um, but actually to have a have a proper uh, have a proper conversation with someone, be it you know video chat or a, or a phone call, was um, was really powerful. Yeah, so you've really, from a leadership point of view, you've seen the power of a connected conversation as opposed to a conversation. And I've seen leaders walk through their office and say uh, good morning and not stop to actually or, or how are you today and not stop to say to actually find out how you are. So, so this is a, a, a huge insight that I think people could actually take away from. Olivia, for you? Yeah, I think probably going off what Theo said, it, it, a lot of it was it, like people always talked about, you know, we're socially distanced and we weren't, we're physically distanced because we were so connected with, you know, our people and, and everything that, that we were doing, you know, with everyone. It was such, just such a highlight for me, so many things. And yeah, I think a lot of learning, you know, and the ways that we could do the better work that we were continuing to do and, and kind of I, I personally had the stop start keep mentality so it was like the things that you know obviously going into lockdown you stop doing the things that I then started doing and then now coming out the end of it it's like what I'm going to keep doing from that learning um, and yeah I think too just just to keep going because I think it was you know it was scary and it was just if you just kept going and kept doing it it just magically somehow you just you know you just kept carrying on and that was yeah <laughs> yeah 
and, and Olivia, this is a, such an important uh, piece and you know, something that we, we've talked about uh, over the years, and that is this, this whole stop, start, continue or keep. Uh, and for those of you listening in, if you haven't done that with your team, as, you, as, as we're evolving into another mode, it's a fantastic team session. Well, it's a fantastic individual session for anyone who's tuned in listening. What am I going to start doing, stop doing, continue doing? But importantly, as a team, what do we need to start doing, stop doing, continue doing to, to, to capitalise on this and to be the most effective we possibly can be? And Megan, your biggest insight. What's, what's your biggest insight? Uh, my biggest insight is really it, it's the time to uh, stop and take a look at what really matters and you know what really really matters and having the privilege of um the time to talk because people are telling me on a one-to-one -one what really matters to them and of course uh, that it's family and so there's been some pretty major changes for people with what they've chosen to do with their lives from the other side of this so someone that you know well in this business has gone and they've um, taken a farm for their family so they're very ambitious as sales as a salesperson with their team but they've chosen to take a farm um, in the country and I, I had a giggle with that person and said well look if you can't have a year in Provence you might as well have a year in Caracca <laughs> 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 and and I and I can I can just see I can see that as a as a video uh, that is going to be played through over the next twelve months. That's going to be great. But seeing the life changes, so for, yeah. for, for me, it's a great big handbrake that's occurred for all of us. I, I'm, and I'm 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 really pleased because it's I've spe it's been a lot of time. I've been by myself a hell of a lot of time, even though I've been on a hangout. So that's been that's been important because I've always looked in the mirror and not out the window, and to be able to see to help others um, around some things and to, to just to see, look, if this was my last day on the planet, this is a really good last day. And every day has been like that. So some of the stuff that was keeping us busy, that's gone. It's just gone. We've worked out what really matters from this time. And, you know, I know you've got John Cunningham on there and he's been an utter treasure as a, just a, as a beacon of um, keeping my eye on John because I see John with his grandkids. I see him with his family. Um, you know, it's family, each other. We, we are a family. We're, you're a, we're a really great little family. They're far too young to be my children, so more <laughs> like brothers and sisters, but family. And it's, it's yeah, that's, that's been the blessing that's come from it. Yeah, uh, fantastic. Look, it's been been brilliant sharing these particular insights. If, if if those of you who've been to Megan's office would know that this is actually in Megan's office, and uh, Megan, can we just or Theo, can you just move that to the the image around to see that uh, that amazing painting? Could you just talk a little bit about your um, I'm not going to call it obsession, but your your desire around paintings. I just like Pamela Wolf. I, I love flowers. This is Pamela Wolf. So we've got five of them in the office and got gorgeous pieces of, of it's just it's just beauty that we can all appreciate. So this office here, there's loads of customers and clients coming through all the time. But you know, we just we just enjoy these things together. So many of them we've chosen together as a team. And it's it's just nice. I, I like this because there's no new buds. It's actually this artist paints like the thing's dying. And look at, and that's, that's life, you know, we're not perfect, we're flawed. And so there's just, there's, it's our appreciation of nature at its finest. And haven't we all had the opportunity to stop and listen to the leaves rustling in the trees and the water dropping on the ground and things that we, it was just in our way and annoying us because we had to get to the office. So being still and just enjoying simple things because I couldn't use the car, couldn't, you know, I mean, it's really nice for the people that had private planes, but no one's going anywhere. So, you know, just appreciating life for what life is. Yeah, yeah. Well, Megan, Theo, Olivia, thank you so much for your contribution. You're, and you know, it, it says there, uh, you're, you're a beacon, great energy uh, as always. And I think it's a, a wonderful thing to, to look outside of ourselves but as well as what you said there, Megan, look in the mirror and say, how can I change me? How can I upgrade me? And how can I be the best version of me as a leader to be able to spread that message to the rest of my team? You guys are doing great. Thank you so much for your contribution to help our clients, um, our real estate community navigate to the best outcome possible. Thank you so much, guys.
Michael, thank you. We're very grateful to your community, the circle of friends that you've you've created around us through uh, through our opportunities with you. It's very very special, and we've you know we have been connected throughout this this experience, and um, it's it's thanks to you. So if we can help any of your members, just reach out, and anything we can pass over to you, we'd we'd be pleased to do that. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, guys. Uh, all the best. Thank you.